making things fall over. There's a thumbnail. Yesterday, I finished The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed, and I am honestly in love with this book and I need to talk about it. So firstly, disclaimer, this was sent to me by the publishers, but all opinions are my own and I have not been asked to say anything. I want to talk about it because I loved it. Also, this is not what the book's going to look like when it is on the shelves. It will look like this and it also will be hardback. This is a proof copy, a very gorgeous proof copy at that. This book follows two characters, but from the POV of one of the characters. So you follow a VK and Gashbar, but uh, a VK is the POV that you're seeing into. I really hope I'm saying the names right. There is a pronunciation guide at the back, which I love when books have that, but I still might be saying it wrong because I'm really bad at pronouncing names. The VK is a pagan girl from a village. She is the wolf, the wolf girl, because they wear wolf cloaks and Gashbar is the woodsman but he's also a prince that's in the blurb that's not a spoiler a vk is from a village where all of the women have powers but she doesn't have any so she's an outcast and every year the woodsmen come and take a pagan girl to sacrifice for the king a vk is betrayed by her fellow villagers and has to go with the woodsman. So VK obviously has to be taken to the capital to be sacrificed for the king, but to get to the capital, they have to go through the woods and the woods are full of monsters. So basically their entire party gets attacked by monsters. They all die apart from a VK and Gashpar. So then they have to rely on each other for survival. Gashpar and a VK then make a pact and the story follows their inner conflict and also their kind of self-acceptance really because both of them very much feel like outcasts and like they don't belong as much as this is a fantasy adventure book it's also a book about self-acceptance. Yeah a lot happens in the 400 and something pages. I loved a VK and Gashbar's dynamic as a pair. For about the first hundred pages, it's basically just them. And I really like their dynamic of she's using like humor to cope with this awful situation that she is in. And he is like really got no sense of humor whatsoever. And I really like that dynamic of two characters that are like polar opposite and one of them just pokes <laughs> like poking a bear with a stick um, to try and get a reaction I love that trope and there is quite a lot of that in this book a VK very much uses humor to cope with her trauma which as much as I don't advise that you do that she does add nice sort of comic relief I guess for the book Sometimes fantasies can be very serious and a bit too serious. Personally, I like it when fantasies have that little bit of humour just to release the tension. Fantasy books can be very full on, so I like it when they have just a little bit of humour every now and again just to break the tension. So a VK definitely provides that because she is so sarcastic and because of her dynamic with Gashbar. It does have that little bit of light relief thrown in there so you're not just tense all of the time. <laughs> so I really appreciate the VK for that. But yeah, it's definitely very much that thing of character goes through a lot of trauma so cracks a joke to deal with it. <laughs> not the healthiest way of coping with things but adds a bit of light relief. Another thing that I really liked about this book is that it is so raw. The trap that a lot of fantasy books tend to fall into is that everything's too perfect and clean and everyone is too beautiful. <laughs> the things that these people are going through, they would not have perfect hair, perfect teeth, perfect face. They would have weathered skin and they would have rotten teeth and you know, their injuries will be disgusting. It's the reality of it, even though it's fantasy. <laughs> Most of the time I find that fantasies are just too polished, whereas this, 
was so raw and honest. It very much was like, these people have been living in the woods. They ain't gonna look gleaming. <laughs> Speaking of raw, this book is very graphic in its description of battles and wounds and gore, uh, which personally I do really enjoy. Enjoy is not the right word. Hmm. I don't know what that says about me. Yeah, I do love a, a graphic <laughs> description. Obviously, that is a, I guess, a trigger warning if you don't like that kind of thing. To be aware that this book is very graphic and it's also why it's definitely not YA. Um, the characters are 25, so the characters aren't teens, but also just the contents of it, it's not YA. It's very much new adult. Yeah, there's, there's some things in this book that are just grim, but it's why I love it. Okay, let's talk romance. This book, very much enemies to lovers, but for people that enjoy a lot of romance, this book doesn't have a lot. It's very much a side plot, a little bit thrown in there every now and again, enough to make your heart melt, but not a huge amount. It's also not spicy. There's no smut. Um, I mean, there's a little bit. I don't want people to go into this thinking that it is like this huge romance. It's not. I've seen that a few times that it, with a criticism of people going into books thinking that there's going to be loads of romance and there just isn't, especially in fantasy. So that's just a little sort of PSA if you really love a bit of romance. But there's enough to keep the people that like a bit of romance happy. I loved it. I loved, I de yeah, I loved the romance. Because Avik is of mixed heritage, so her mother is from the pagan village that she grew up in, but her father is Yahuli, which is a religious but also ethnic group. But because of this, you get to see both of these groups, because a lot of the time in fantasy, when there are civilians at risk, most of the time they are nameless and faceless, and you don't really know much about them, and... It's not that it's like hard to sympathise with them, but because you don't get to spend any time with them, you can't really attach any feelings to them. Whereas this book shows you all of the different people that basically the protagonist is fighting for. You spend time with these sort of side characters or the nameless and faceless civilians that are in the crossfire, you get to spend time with them. So there is more emotion behind fighting for them and defeating the villain. The story's got a lot of Hungarian history and its own voices, Jewish mythology. So there's a lot of parallels in this book to what actually happened to Jewish people, to the persecution that Jewish people have been put through. And the villain of the piece basically wants to banish the Yehuli people from the capital, but that makes the villain so much more scary because yes the villain has some magical abilities but those magical abilities aren't what make him evil or what make him the villain it's his opinions about these people these different religions and races which makes him scary it's kind of like gaston from beauty and the beast personally i think gaston is the scariest disney villain that there is because he is just a normal person. He doesn't have any magical powers. He doesn't have any special abilities. He's just a man with an ego that can do terrible things. And that's definitely what the villain of this book feels like. He's scary because there have been people like that that have existed. So even though this book is fantasy, elements of it feel very, very real. But that's what makes this book so great is that it feels so real even though it's fantasy and i'll also probably put a bit of a trigger warning in there for anti-semitism because yeah there is elements of that that run through the um like persecution and stuff of the people ava reed has, has definitely been able to find that line of it's fantasy so it's otherworldly but at the same time there's stuff that happens in this book that is pretty close to home um, and that has and can happen. If like me you are a fan of mythology you will love this. There's so many stories that are like woven into the plot I find it really interesting and I love how mythology can like inspire so much especially the stories. The stories can inspire so many morals and just the fact that mythology has sort of like crafted our language. 
But the thing I think I loved most about this book is the fact that yes, it's a fantasy book, but it also felt really real and it tackled some really deep and interesting and important subjects. One of the things that it deals with is self-acceptance, is learning who you are. Both Avike and Gashpar go on their own journeys of self-acceptance. But I loved this book so much that I am actually tempted to buy the hardback when it comes out on the 8th of June because I love this book. <laughs> and it might just have snuck its way into my top 10. I loved it that much. And I'm really excited to see what Ava Reed does next because this is their debut novel. I am very much looking forward to what they have to offer in the future because this book is incredible. <laughs> but can like the 8th of June hurry up so that people can read it and I can talk about this book with people because <laughs> I wanna talk about it. Also, can we just appreciate it's a floppy paperback. Obviously, if you get the book, it won't it won't be a floppy paperback, it will be a hardback and it will have a different cover, but you cannot appreciate my happiness. <laughs> when this comes out on June 8th, if any of you read it, let me know your thoughts. I'd love to know your opinions on it. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope this was uh, a little bit insightful. Um, as to whether this book is going to be for you or not. I really hope it is because I loved it and I want everyone else to love it too. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video then click the like button and subscribe for more videos like this and happy reading. <laughs>